The film begins with a young man named Gao lying unconscious in a wrecked car at the bottom of a cliff. Local village girl Shinsan is watching the car from afar. After a while, Gao woke up, got out of the car, and stumbled on a rock. He was just a few feet from the scene of the accident when Singh approached him and knocked him down with the rock. The scene shifts eight hours before the horrific car accident. Jem Hunter Gao, joined by trader Zayana and technician Ching, are all three standing on the sidewalk. There Gao finds two suspicious men in his car keeping a close eye on him from the street and quickly realizes they are hired thugs. After saying goodnight to Shana, Gao got into the car and drove away. As he expected, the men also started their engines and followed him. Gao stepped on the accelerator and drove off at breakneck speed, launching a ferocious chase that caused an accident. Back in the present, Gao wakes up in a primitive but strange village. Here, men are the dominant gender, doing household chores and looking after children, while women hunt and provide for their families. Her father is the head of the household and prepares meals, while her mother protects her husband as a guard and soldier. The village has no technology or knowledge of scientific products, and is a remote area completely cut off from the outside world. Gao also finds out that Xian is the tribal queen and he is surprised to learn this. Gao doesn't believe her at first, thinking the villagers are just nerdy cosplayers with great costumes and perfect setups. He verbally abuses Shin and the rest of her women, which angers the handsome tribal leader. Seen got angry at Gao's attitude and locked him in a wooden cage as punishment. Gao then realizes that they are actually real people and decides to return to the city as soon as possible. However, Yun He, the tribal astrologer, tells Gao that he cannot leave the village without Shin's permission. A few hours later, Gao pleads with Shin to release him from the cage and take him to his car. Shin is skeptical but decides to show him mercy and follows him. The two return to the scene of the accident while Gao searches for useful supplies for the car. Gao finds a metal bat in his trunk and wields it playfully. He accidentally hit Shin's girlfriend in the head and she passed out on her floor. Gao seizes a golden opportunity to escape and packs his backpack into the nearby forest. A few minutes later, the car's fuel tank began to leak, and Singh was soon engulfed in a blazing ring of flames. Villagers spotted the fire and immediately rushed to the accident site and dumped buckets of water to extinguish the fire. Gao hears the villagers screaming in the forest and feels guilty for leaving Shin behind. He rushed to the crime scene and covered himself with a bucket of water before entering a fiery ring and carrying Singh out. The moment they left the premises, the car exploded, and the two fell into a nearby pond, to the relief of the villagers. In the next scene Gao returns to the village and finds a mobile phone in his backpack. He then played a song that caught the attention of Singh who burst into the room. Fearing her strange device, Shin attempts to break it, but Gao assures her that it is harmless. He offers her headphones and the two listen to music together, but Shin quickly falls asleep. After putting the sleeping Shin to bed, Gao frantically searches the room to find a map to return to the city. In the room Gao is excited to find a sapphire gemstone and decides to ask Shin about it when he wakes up. The next morning, Shin tells her that the sapphire was a gift from her late mother. Her greedy Gao offers her several goods, including instant her ramen, novels, and even mobile phones, in exchange for stones. However, Singh refused to part with her jewel, stating that it was her most prized possession. Gao is disappointed but decides to steal the gem instead. Later that day, Sin Gao asks to meet her in the fields at night so that she can see the stars together. Gao accepted the offer, and Shin smiled shyly and left the hut. That night, they sprawled out on the lawn and stared at the stars. Suddenly, Sin lunges at Gao and tries to undress her to her surprise. He pushes her away, and the two quarrel violently. Gao is shocked to learn that stargazing means sex in the village. That's why Shin attacked him. Suddenly, Gao sprints to the village to escape, but Shin chases after him. Xian gets angry with Gao and locks him up when he returns to the village. Gao explained to Sin that he did not know the hidden meaning of the phrase and that he took it at face value. He also said that in his hometown, people express their feelings in romantic ways, such as professing their love when it snows. Sin finally understands Gao, but she makes him spend the night in a cell until she returns to her hut. Zana and Shin return to town to search for Gao, but fail. They check where his car has slid off a cliff, but are disappointed to find nothing. Hata uses a drone to search the surroundings, but the magnetic field confuses the plane and causes Hata's monitor to go black. When the two return home, they encounter Lian, a businessman with whom Gao signed a contract. The contract requires Gao to meet with Lian every 15 days. Failure to comply will result in a fine of $60 million. 
Thirteen days have passed since he disappeared, but Lian came looking for him. Zana lies that Gao has gone on a trip to the mountains and will return soon. Lian is not convinced, but he gives 48 hours to find Gao before taking action. Xin returns to the village and takes Gao to the forest. Xin confesses his love while pouring a bucket of chicken blood on him and asks him to marry him. Apparently, Mr. Xian misunderstood him last night and thought he said blood instead of snow, because both words are similar in Chinese. Gao gets her mad at her and walks away in her annoyance, but she soon falls into her trap. Gao desperately pleads with Xin to free him from her trap. However, Xin asks him to accept the marriage proposal before he himself does, and a defeated Gao finally agrees. On the way back, Gao finds one of Qin's drone blades in a bush. Seeing this, he realizes that his friends are looking for him and decides to flee the village as soon as possible. That night, Gao and Xian had a discussion and decided to get married the next day. Gao asks Xin about the village's topography and finds out that there is a secret cave in the forest. He suspects the cave is an exit from the village and plans to use it as an escape route. Gao also finds out that there is a wine cellar in the village and asks Xian to take him there. She obeys and the two head to the village's central pantry. Unbeknownst to her, Gao throws sleeping pills into a wine barrel to stun all the villagers during her wedding. The couple then return to Gao's room, and Xin offers Gao her sapphire stone as an early wedding gift. Gao feels guilty but collects the gems anyway. The next night, the couple celebrates their wedding and observes the tribe's unique rituals while Sing gets down on one knee and Gao professes his love. Gao accepts her as his wife. The villagers then sing and play love songs and the newlyweds dance together. At the end of the feast, Gao refuses a toast and invites the villagers to drink their respective wines. The unsuspecting natives swallow the medicated drink, but Gao throws it away when no one is looking. A few hours later, the villagers fall asleep while Gao packs up and leaves the village. He passes through the forest and eventually reaches a cave that connects him to the outside world. Hardened in his resolve, Gao enters a dark cave and begins his journey to the city. The next morning he finally reached the edge of the cave and ran to the top of the mountain. Smiling, he saw the road nearby. Back at Gao's house, Lian arrives with her husbands just as the 48-hour deadline is approaching. Lian asks Zana and Qing where Gao is, but they reveal that they have no idea where Gao is. Upon hearing this, Lian offers Zana a deal that gives her ownership of her house. Zana refuses to sign her paperwork, but Lian gives her no choice. The businesswoman signals her men, instructing them to take the two hostage while Zana is forced to sign the paperwork with her thumbprint. Luckily, Gao bursts through the front door just in time to stop them. While Gao is talking to Lian, Qin takes advantage of the distraction and swallows the signed contract. Finally, the businessman left home and promised to keep in touch. As she leaves, Gao refreshes and eats with his friends, who ask where he has been. Gao wants to protect the villagers from the outside world, so he skillfully avoids their questions and lies to his friends. After the meal, Gao shows them the sapphire gem he got from Xin. They hadn't seen a sapphire this size in years, so they stared at the stone in disbelief. Finally, Gao gives Zana a gem and a sample of the village's soil for testing. Later that day, the trio visit Gao's uncle when in a nursing home, dressing up in clown costumes to entertain the elderly residents. In the next scene, the villagers wake up and frantically search for Gao. Heartbroken by his disappearance, Xing quickly assumes that he took the jewel and fled. He is grief-stricken. She decides to go to town to look for him. Village astrologer Yun Ha was initially against their migration to the city. However, when Xin pleads, Yun Ha leads Xin to the cave entrance and warns the townsfolk to beware before the queen departs. When Sing arrives in town, she encounters Yi Tian, a well-known astrological social media influencer looking for a female co-host. Intrigued by her strange clothes and her eccentric behavior, Xin offers to hire her for her own company. Yi asks for the manager, but a confused scene only hands over the card Gao left in the village. Yi finds the number there and tracks Gao to a nearby nursing home. At Xin's request, Yi drives to the place where he betrayed her to look for Gao. Arriving at her kindergarten, Gao spots Xian from afar and she runs before meeting him. He hides behind a bush and watches Xin looking for him. Miss Xin finally gives up and heads for the exit of the house, but she hears Miss Gao sneezing from a nearby bush and quickly turns around. Gao shows up in a clown costume, but Xin doesn't notice him and just watches him fly away. Some time later, Xin gets into a car with Yi and the two drive away from the house. Yi tells the ignorant Xin that clowns are not real creatures, they are just masks. Xin is surprised by the fact, 
and she concludes that the strange clown she saw in the house was actually Gao. She asked Yi to take her to her kindergarten, and media influencers followed her. Unfortunately, upon reaching the kindergarten, Gao and his friends have long since disappeared, much to Shin's dismay. Yi volunteers to take Xi into his home, but her tribal leader refuses, sitting on the sidewalk in front of her kindergarten, saying he will wait for Gao's return. Her Yi tries desperately to get her out, but she refuses, sitting in the pouring rain. Meanwhile, Gao feels guilty for hiding from Xian and tricks Jin into finding out where she is. A few minutes later, Ching tells him that Xin is still with Yi in her nursing home. Mr. Gao thanked Mr. Qin for his help and immediately drove back to the kindergarten. There Gao sees Xian sitting next to him in the rain with Yi. He stopped in front of the duo and rolled out the window. Sing was shocked to see him and she quickly grabbed his shirt. Gao desperately begged him not to hit him, making up a ridiculous lie that it was wrong to hit people in the rain. Since Shin is naive, she trusts him and gets into his car, where he drives her home. When they arrive, Shin aims a crossbow at him, but Gao manages to calm her down and put down her gun. Shin asks Gao to return the sapphire. However, her amusing gem hunter distracts her by offering her cake. Shin tasted her sweet treat, forgetting the stone, she chewed it hard and tasted its strange taste. After eating, Shin spends the rest of his time exploring the house until he gets used to his new surroundings. She mistook it for a monster and shot her arrows at the TV, but Gao explained that it was just a device that couldn't hurt her. Shin is fascinated by the modern world, celebrating while brandishing her perforated down pillow and causing chaos throughout her house. The next day, Zana visits Gao and is shocked to find her living room in a mess. Shortly after, Shin, who is eating her instant noodles, comes up to her. Zana steals a plate from Shin and wants to know who she is and what her relationship with Gao is. Shin grabs Zana's face, annoyed by her actions, while the dealer screams in terror. Gao was awakened by the screaming and rushed downstairs to find out what happened. He found Zana wrapped in a blanket and covering her mouth with her handkerchief. Gao quickly frees her, but he is appalled to learn that Shin is her culprit. Zana gets angry and asks who the strange-looking girl is. Gao quickly catches Zana and takes her to her upstairs room. There he realizes what happened when he went missing. Gao explains that Xian is the village queen of a remote matrilineal society ruled by women and subordinated by men. Zana didn't believe him at first, but realized he was telling the truth when Gao showed him Sin's native crossbow. In the living room, Shin hears a knock on the window and is shocked to find Yi in front of his house. She rushes to the door and tries to open it, but she doesn't know how. At Yi's direction, Xian finds the door handle, but she turns it by force. So break it. In the end, she gave up opening the door and completely broke it down. Gao and Zana heard the door slamming and rushed downstairs to find out what happened. Gao is enraged when he finds Yi at his house and drags him out before locking the gate. However, Yi reveals that he knows Xian is from a remote island and refuses to go. Gao is shocked to hear this, and he threatens Yi to stay away while he returns home with Xian. The next day, Gao goes to a fashion store with Shin to buy new clothes. Shin tries on the costume and Gao goes outside for privacy. Gao goes outside and is surprised to see Lian coming from afar, and worries that Xian will find him. So he quickly hid behind a wall and watched carefully as a strict woman entered the store.